Check, check. Yo, yo, yo. What is going on, everyone? What up everyone, here I am, Sam Long, yo, 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 coming in, just checking in after finishing second place at the first PTO T100 Triathlon World Series race, and I am honestly pretty amped, pretty over the moon with my placement, with my finish there. I just feel very proud of my, myself for the result, I feel I got the most out of myself, and I wanna give you guys a little debrief of how everything went, so let's just hop and dive right in. Okay, so starting with kind of the pre-race, right? The T100 races, the PTO, there's a lot more media commitments. You get there early. I got in Monday night for a race on Saturday, which is for sure the earliest I would ever get to a race, in, for sure the earliest I have ever gotten to a race in the United States. And there in Homestead, we all stay in one hotel, and. Yeah, it was, it was an interesting experience. You got to do a lot of photos. You got to do a lot of interviews. To be frank, the, the, the PTO, right, they're trying to create pre-race buzz. They're trying to put Sam Long into a certain role that I may or may not agree with that I at one time may have, you know, fully embraced and said, great, let's make me out to be this kind of bad guy who says things about other athletes. And I for sure noticed a lot of kind of, you could call it like leading questions, right? Leading questions directed at me kind of trying to get me to say things about other athletes that are maybe not the most positive and this time I was a new person I was a different guy I could feel these questions coming I was aware of them and I just did not go down that rabbit hole one because it's a lot of drama but two because anytime I've done that it takes me out of my own headspace and it gets me out of getting the best out of myself so this time I just didn't even go down that route. I, I stayed focused on myself, which is how I feel, right? Like it's always, okay, let's ask you, hey, how do you feel that Jason West is here and he's a much, much better runner than you, so you've got no chance of beating him. So, hey, give us your thoughts on Jason West. And, you know, that's a rabbit hole you can go down. And, and I didn't go down because I believed in myself and I backed myself. And a beautiful thing about having a kid now is that race week actually felt quite relaxing. Um, I, I desperately would have loved to have the family there and, and we figured it out. So the family's going to be at pretty much every race starting now on and, and I'm super excited about that. But my day-to-day -day life with training, with sponsor management, with taking care of the bikes and with being a big, big family guy, like my life at home is incredibly busy, which I would not change that for anything in the world. But going alone then to a race and having the media commitments, minimal training, like I was super relaxed and super calm and I've never been that way for a big race. I've always been a big stress case, kind of like, yeah, two out of my own head. So anyways, we get to race day. I had a great, nice warm up, it, jamming out to the tunes, doing my own thing and really believing in myself. And then boom, the swim goes off and the start of the swim was kind of crazy. I've, I've watched the footage several times now. I definitely got into a few too many battles there at the start and that potentially cost me making that group. But ultimately the swim, I swam exactly where I thought I would swim. I've come a long, long way in the swim and I was just super positive in the swim. The whole time I was like, this is where I need to be. I'm a great triathlete, you know, triathlon, swim, bike, run, and, and we can all have weaknesses in a certain area. And okay, it's quite obvious my weakness is in the swim, but I was like, I'm a great triathlete and 
you know, the finish line is about who's the best triathlete. And so the swim is just one part of that. And, and found myself working with Leon. He led about the first maybe 60%. And then I was like, okay, I better kind of take charge and, and do some work here. So I came by and, and we exited and then heard about 320 down, which actually I heard three minutes down. I think everyone said three minutes, which is always interesting, right? The fans, like, they think three minutes and 320, they just round down. But it's like, that's actually a very important 20 seconds to know about. But they just said, you're three minutes down. And so I was like, okay, cool, three minutes. Like, that's actually about what I thought because I was prepared for like three to 330. And so I was like, I'm actually on the better end of this spectrum, which in the moment I think was good. It made me positive. And then mounted on my bike. Unfortunately, I had a little bit of an issue. What happened is since we were kind of the last ones, they usually have like a ref kind of person standing, marking the dismount line, but this person had left. So the dismount line was very unclear. And then there was a timing mat like 20 meters ahead of that. And so often the timing mat is the dismount line, right? Because that's when it starts the bike. But in this instance, that wasn't the case. The dismount line was earlier. So I was kind of trying to ask, hey, where's the dismount line? Where's the dismount line? And then finally they were like, oh, you're past it. But throughout all this disorientation, I hopped on my bike, but I wasn't quite clear headed enough. And I pushed on my shoe the wrong way. And then my shoe popped off. And then I'm going forward, but my shoe's behind. So I had to do a U-turn. I had to get off my bike. I had to get off my bike. I had to put my shoe on. And then I had to make progress, which for sure held me up by about 20 seconds. But that's that. Then onto the bike. The bike was super interesting. I don't think the live coverage quite captured it. I kind of started off, my strategy was just to be nice and consistent all ride, and I started off very consistent. And then, right, we have a big lap out rule. So if the front lapped me out, then essentially my race would be over. You can still make progress, but you then can't pass any other athletes. So for all intents and purposes, if you get lapped out, you know, in the first two or three laps of this race, you're as good as finishing last place. And I wasn't super aware of this, but then actually Talbot Cox, like I'm coming through, like one of the laps and he goes, you've got the effing go, like very intense. And I'm like, okay, like that sounds pretty intense. So I, I, I'm making the U-turn. I look back and I see Alistair and Matias coming for me. And I'm like, oh man, like, I mean, I'm talking like a hundred meters back. So looking then at the timer, at one point they were 21 seconds behind me. So I was like, I gotta put my nose to the grindstone. I know they're coming for me. I know that they are seeing me and that's like the most juicy carrot in the world for them to come after me. So I just really focused on picking it up, but without panicking, right? Picking it up, but without panicking, staying calm, trusting my abilities, knowing that I had this, not like, okay, let's go full gas, but like, let's just do what I need to do. I actually, I actually was quite positive about it. I was actually like, this is kind of cool. I can see the front of the race. There's only two people, it's a small group. This is kind of a positive. And I actually kind of used it to my advantage. I was like, let's give them a little bit more hope. So I gave them a little bit more hope and then let's slowly ramp it up and, and let's maybe see if we can get them to ride a little bit outside of their ability levels and cook themselves a bit for the run. And eventually this gap started to open up where I, well, then I started passing people, actually, that's what happened. So I started passing several people. So now I was like, okay, they're lapping other people. At least if I get lapped out, I'm not the, la I'm not the first person to get lapped out. So no biggie, but then they were farther back. And then I was able to kind of start to focus on my own race a bit more on myself and just execute my plan. I basically paced it dead even, but I think I got faster as I went down because I learned which corners exactly to push, which straightaways to push, where to do the arrow tucks. And finally then, like the last five laps, I was just really, really making up time. And my mantra throughout all this, my mantra throughout the entire race was race as if I'm winning, right? So race as if I'm winning, like have that headspace that I'm doing a great job, just get the most out of myself in each moment. And truthfully all day, I was just racing myself. So then I come into transition, I'm, I'm trying to kind of count the bikes. I'm like, okay, I think there were eight bikes ahead of me and kind of rack, get going. We have a big long out and back so I can kind of see everyone. And I'm like, okay, like the lead was a bit far ahead. You know, the, the top four guys were a bit far ahead, but I could see three guys ahead of me uh, that I was like, this seems like pretty doable. I just settled in and, and kind of got in my groove and, and I had a carrot to chase. And 
the run is just, man, everything started to come together on the run. Like I was just feeling so good. I was feeling so smooth. And it was one of those runs where, of course, like I think everyone's suffering. I mean, we're running in 95 degree heat, but like obviously my suffering was, my speed at that same suffering level was faster than others. And then just having the people to catch, like I just started to build momentum and build momentum. And at the time I was like, let's just shoot for like a fifth place finish. Let's, let's shoot for fifth. I got to pass four people. That was really the goal. I was like, I've been fifth at the last two PTO races. So if I can just be consistent with fifth, at, at the time, the podium seemed a little out of the question. And then suddenly like everything, everything was just coming together. I was just moving so well. I was just so in my zone, in my element, just pumping the legs and feeling good. And, and then really with kind of two laps to go, I could see like, if I pick it up, like I'm going to get on the podium for sure. I'm going to get a third place finish and maybe even better than that. And let me tell you, you know, this is where the dark side comes out. The dark side comes out. Like I've got all this energy, all these things stored up, right? I've, I've got years of hearing that I'm not a top athlete, that I'll never compete with the best. Even though, of course, this is like, it's, it's complete utter bullshit because I've been at the top at world championships, world class fields, on the podium multiple times. But yet, no matter what, I'm always hearing this and I'm always having to hear like, Oh, you suck at swimming. You're never an athlete. You and Lionel Sanders, you guys suck. The sport's moved on without you. You guys are athletes of the past, so on and so forth. And I want to be clear in my day-to-day -day life, I'm, I'm quite lighthearted about this, but that's, that's why I've got the skull in my kit this year. It's so that I store it in a place. And then, you know, I just brought up all this like, you know, earthy, guttural, like, like beast energy i brought up this beast energy and i just unleashed the beast and it was like time to go time to see what i can get and i just started like opening opening it up you know i passed out i passed matthias and then shortly after i passed alistair and then i could see like well magnus is just right ahead and let me be clear i knew like at this point there's like i don't know a mile and a half two two three kilometers maybe left and i'm like it's going to take two things like I'm going to need to have a great lap and if I'm going to win, Magnus is going to need to falter, right? Like it was, it was just too little distance and too much of a time and I was like, the only thing I control there is that I have a great, great last lap and, and I can't control whether he falters. So I just focused on what I could do, had a great last lap. Of course, Magnus did not falter. Of course, Magnus won. Of course, hats off to Magnus. I have an immense amount of respect for him. He set out such a great example of how to race. Obviously, I'm super impressed with how he's improved his swim so much over two years. So maybe Magnus, if you can DM me, send me those tips, you know, maybe we can uh, collaborate on that. But no, you know, I tip my hat to you, Magnus. I tip my hat to you and the team. Phenomenal racing. It's, it's been a great honor racing with you over the years. And so, yeah, thank you for, for putting on such a great race and, and pushing me to my limits. And that's the race recap, obviously finished and just, yeah, I'm so proud of myself. I'm so proud of the team. I've come home and Laura Gruden, you know, my fiance, she is so much a part of this win. She has sacrificed so much. And so even though I only crossed the finish line, this was absolutely for my family. I felt as if I was crossing that line with Laura next to me, with Leo next to me. And, you know, the final part of this is that even though I've had the success tasting the second place being so close to first like like now I'm more hungry to win than ever before more hungry to win than ever before and I am so excited for the rest of the series and I I haven't I, I, my brain's just been going a million miles an hour because I still had a lot of mistakes I still have a lot of things I can improve on so I've got to you know, I've got my mental notebook of things I can improve on and I'm getting to work to improve I am not resting on my laurels I am excited about this tour and I'm going after it and seeing just how much better I can get. It's equally a race in the world to be top ranked, but even more so, it's a race within myself to see how much I can progress my abilities. So with that, I just wanna say thank you all so very much for tuning in. Thank you for all the yo, yo, yo love. I felt it from you guys in that race. It propelled me on, and we're gonna see you for the rest of the tour. Cheers and yo, yo, yo.